So for the few minutes, let me start how Bishop starts. For the few minutes that have been afforded to me, allow me <laughs> to preach with a sermon that I have titled, I am running on empty. I am running on empty. You've been told today, obviously, it is Father's Day. And it's good to see my friends from Rwanda. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Wapigeni makofi tafadhali. David and Chris, good to see you as well. God bless you guys. It is Father's Day, and, and, and many a times, they make fun of Father's Day. They say that Father's Day is the same day as World Toilets Day, or something like that. Many people even forget there is Father's Day. Many people just, uh, and ladies, please allow me to open my heart. It is not the time for you to call yourself a father. Can the men say Amen. Yeah, I've seen many ladies saying, happy Father's Day to us. You're not fathers. So today, just allow us to have our moment. Is that okay? And I want all the ladies here because you have a father, you have a spiritual father, a biological father, an uncle or a brother, that you encourage us as we have a few minutes uh, today. Is that okay? Can we just have this day? No, do you allow us to have this day? Even the ones who are in the blogs who hit me, please, for the next half an hour, just let me enjoy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ladies, can you clap for the men here today? Genesis chapter number 2 and verses 21 and 22. Genesis 2, 21, 22. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's rib and closed up the opening. Go on, 22. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. First Samuel 22 and verse 1. As Samuel 22 and 1. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there. Go on. Then others began coming. Men who were in trouble or in debt or who were just discontented until David was the captain of about 400 men. Father, anoint my lips to declare your word. May everybody here receive their rema from the logos. I freeze every plan of the enemy. Jehovah God, be glorified as you command the angels assigned to this day to do that which they are divinely orchestrated to do. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. I am running on empty. I had titled this message, The Emptiness of a Man, and I knew it would have been misconstrued, so I decided to call it, I am running on empty. In the book of Genesis, we see very clearly that God put man into deep sleep. Amen? And out of that deep sleep, a rib was removed, meaning our incompleteness of a man necessitated the completeness of another human being. So as men, we are used to giving. We gave our rib for a woman to be complete. Even for a child to be born, we give our seed. So as men, from the time the world began, we are givers. So then when we woke up from the deep sleep, we realized there was something missing. But whatever was missing is on the inside because the Bible says it was covered. So there are things that we know we are missing that the world, if you look at us on face value, you will not be able to tell. Because the rib is of absolute importance. The rib cage actually gives us the upper body balance. The rib cage is important in breathing, by the way. Hallelujah. So the rib was removed in that place. And it was covered before we were sent forth to the world. So what is happening is, as men, there is something we keep on looking for to cover, for a lack of a better word, our emptiness. Hallelujah. 
So everything, when we walk up, we felt some pain, and we may not walk straight, or we may walk a bit gingerly, because something is missing. So it is in us, ladies and gentlemen, that every day there is something we are looking for. Something. Every day a man wakes up, I can tell you this without fear of contradiction, there is something we are looking for. And that is why men have three kind of pressures. The personal pressure, the family pressure, and the societal pressure. Every man, we wake up and we wonder, are we good enough? Are we better today than we were yesterday? We put ourselves under so much pressure. We want to be the best. Even when you're driving in traffic and you have a Mercedes-Benz E350 black and the person next to you has an exact same Mercedes black E350, you want to look for a mistake in theirs for yours to look good. There is a pressure that we put ourselves under to be better tomorrow than we are today. That is the personal pressure. I want us to go on a journey so that we may understand, ladies, our wives, our sisters, and our mothers, that you may understand why some things happen to us personal pressure. Then we have family pressure. Every man will tell you when there's an issue at home. More often than not, at a greater percentage of the men, you are the ones who receive the call. That you got to sort things out. Mom, dad is sick in the village. You got to sort things out. You may be the only brother with 75 sisters, but your number is the one that will ring. And sometimes I tell you, you don't even have a solution, but because you are the man, the pressure is on you to rise up to the occasion. And no wonder sometimes you see men talking to themselves. Don't call them mad. They're trying to do some mathematics in their head. Everything. This is family pressure. The man. Then the third pressure a man has is the societal pressure. Mwanaume ni kujikaza. Mwanaume ni kuparara. Mwanaume ni kusweat. And you may be making fun of our sweat, but we have to work extra hard because there's something missing. We need more energy. When you're growing up at the age of five, if you fell down and you're a boy, they would all look away and say to each other, don't look at him, he will cry. Or if you start crying, you are told, men, boys, don't cry. If your small sister falls, you're in House of Grace, they will call people from Donholm to try and help you sort yourself out. That is why even as men, we do not know how to be brides to Christ. We can't lift our hands and cry because now you'll go and say, why are you crying? You are a man. How did you embarrass me like that? You, some of you wives, tell that to your husbands. I know you're looking at me and you're feeling very guilty. Just say, ouch. So we are not allowed to show our emotions. We are not allowed to be vulnerable. We are not allowed to say, today I can't do it. We are not allowed to say, help me, today I am struggling. Personal pressure, family pressure, and societal pressure. But then how, where does that take us as men? What are we supposed to do as men? The pressure is crazy. And that's why I said, today we will not say the way we are, there are some deadbeat fathers. Because I've seen on social media, and I made sure I studied, on Father's Day, we have a lot of messages of deadbeat fathers. Why can't you say, talk about them last week? Why wait for Father's Day? The only time we need to celebrate men, then we are being told, you don't cut it. We are being told, you don't have what it takes. You are being told, you are useless. Only this day, allow us to enjoy. Ladies, do you allow us to enjoy? Do you allow us to enjoy? Do you allow us to enjoy? So through the Bible, allow me to use a few men in the Bible to tell you what we go through. We have also the pressure to produce results. Genesis chapter number 18 and verse 11, 13. Hallelujah. We shall finish on time, trust me. Abraham and Sarah were both very old, and by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. Go on. So she laughed silently to herself and said, how could a worn-out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially 
when my master, my husband, is also so old? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? You know the greater percentage every time. And I've done my little research. There is a childless couple. Even before medical examination, it is said it is the man who was the problem. Hello? So the pressure to produce all the time. If Abraham was alive today, I want to imagine the things we would have said about him. Me, I have only one child. My uncles ask me, when are you going to give us others? And I would want to imagine, imagine a man trying and he's not happening. And years after year, that's the pressure we are under. The pressure to take our children to the best schools. The pressure to take our mothers on holiday. The pressure to produce. And when time goes and age is catching up, the pressure is too much. Ladies, I want you to understand, it can be tough. It is actually very tough to be a man. But it is a privilege to be a man. So the pressure we all go through is the pressure to produce. We are not sitting saying it is okay. We are also feeling the pressure. And that is why 77% of the suicides in the world are by men. And the other percentage are dead just waiting to be buried. Dead men walking. That is why we go watch football and we have DSTV in the house. We want to release that pressure. Yes, we are tongue-speaking, heaven-bound, demon-chasing, but we need to release that pressure. Can the men say amen? Because I know you are feeling me. You know what I'm talking about. Some of these things you've been trying to tell your wives, but they don't listen, so you're saying, Robert, keep on keeping on. You men, you just better buy me lunch after this. That pressure. Is to always produce, to always be at the front. Sometimes we can't be at the front. Madam Osorio said sometimes you are led to the wilderness. So do not put the man under pressure to be in his land of milk and honey while God is dealing with him in the wilderness. We can't always be on top of our game week in, week out. I imagine Pastor Musioka, when uh, Bishop has told us the pressure that uh, the, the, the wife was going through, you can imagine what he was going through. In fact, maybe he had more pressure than the wife. That is why you call your spiritual father, unamwambia kimi umana. But at home, when you go to hospital and the relatives are there, you seem as if you're the best thing since sliced bread. You appear as if you're a presidential candidate. You are in control, but you're dying. If this man could open up their hearts to you, you would even tell them, we are sorry we have been hard on you. If only men could speak. Number two, I want you to understand why we keep on looking for something. We are looking for peace because the enemy is after us. I want to, sub to submit to every man here. The day you were born and the doctor said, it's a boy, heaven endorsed you, but hell released a file with your name on it. The idea of the enemy is to crush the man because if you crush the man, you have exposed the woman and you have confused the children. And that is why if there is a three o'clock uh, movement in your house and you know everybody was in the house, so you're expecting maybe it's a thief, it is not the wife who goes to check. What do they say? Baba Nani, there is somebody moving out there. And by the way, when you are going to check, trust me, we are scared as well. We walk like this. But in the inside, you are like this. You are telling God, cover my nakedness. We are also scared. The enemy is after us. And sometimes, if you look at David, David was anointed. The hand of God was upon David. David. But there was a powerful force opening every arsenal, that is the king, to finish David. And many would have said, David has misbehaved. Sometimes the level of attack we go through as men is not because we have walked badly. It's not because we are careless. It is because of the anointing and the hand and the mandate of God over our lives. The enemy is after us. Because if the enemy can get the man, I can tell you without fear, the women... 
are naked. Finish the man. You finish the society. And ladies, as I preach, even the ones watching online, we are just talking as men. Don't turn anything to me, for me to say uh, that I'm saying women are useless. I'm not saying women are useless. Today, let it be about men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want men to understand that yes, it is tough. But even you ladies, please, I want you to understand the men. I'll be releasing a book, The Three Hearts of a Man, The Worshipper, The Warrior, and The Warrior. There is a time we are tired. But don't say, because John, next door neighbor, is having a party, and your husband, Philip, wants to rest, don't compare him to your next door neighbor, who is in his moment of strength. Let your husband relax. We go through battles because the enemy is after us. And sometimes I want to tell you, if you are not careful, the enemy does not come directly. The enemy can use a woman to come and finish the man. Hello? It's okay as the bishop says, I've carried my own amens. Even you ladies, sometimes you know, you are in Facebook gossiping your husbands. Saying you're asking for a friend and your husband is sitting next there calling him useless. You do not know how much he has been battling in secret because the enemy is after the man. David kept on running. We are all at some point in our lives being a David. We know God has called us. We know the hand of God is upon us. But we are running. We have not been given the throne yet. But on our journey from being anointed to the appointment, there is battles upon battles. So please walk with us, pray for us, give us the right words of affirmation because your completeness was necessitated by our incompleteness. From today, no lady from House of Grace will gossip the husband. In fact, I tell everybody these things about Bishop. If there's a man who cannot stand gossip, it is Bishop. I don't know if you guys know that. For those of us who have the gift of access, trust me, he cannot stand gossip. Then you, you are the admin of a gossip group. Pull your stools. Let's talk about this man. Do a quick about on Facebook today. You will see how men have been bashed. It is not deadbeat father day. It's father's day. Deadbeat, you can pick it on Wednesday. And sometimes they're not deadbeat. You have just denied them access. Hello? Fathers also fight and sacrifice in secret. When you go to heaven, please, for me, I know I'm looking for two men. David and Saul. Paul. Those are the two men I want to meet. The others you can be waving at the parking. But for those of you who want to get this message deeper, when you go to heaven, look for Job. The children were having fun. Everybody was having fun. But he needed to sacrifice for his children. In case they do something wrong, he would go to the altar and give a sacrifice for the children. There are some things we have done for our children, not because we have, but it's sacrificial. And then when we come out, we appear as if everything is in order. Sometimes we cannot buy you that Xbox, PlayStation, but because every child in the estate has, we sacrifice and give it to you. And then we come out very strong. But men don't talk. We go and cry in secret. How many times, ladies and gentlemen, have men gone in secret and have cried, have parked their car in the house, but then the wife asks, why did you stay in the car for 20 minutes? Who are you talking to? Why are you talking to a woman? No, he was crying and asking God, will I make it? It can't be he was talking to a woman in the parking. We have to shower three times because our tears must be camouflaged. The other day, I was playing golf with those gentlemen. And we said we were playing 18 holes. We wanted nine, but the stress was heavy. So we needed to talk. They bear me witness. The things we talked about, we left that place Light. Ladies, you may not like me after this, but you love me when you do deliverance the other Tuesday. The spirit of heaviness will be released. <laughs> this man you are seeing here, 
well put together. Me, I almost broke when Bishop broke here some time back when he was preaching. You remember? You think we just break for the sake? By the time a man is breaking, he has been hit, we have been hit, the knees have no strength, the ankles have been crushed, the ribcage is finished, there is nobody around us. So if we don't release it, we will die. There's a gentleman a few years ago who committed suicide. I don't want to mention his name because he's a famous man. And he told his wife, today I don't feel like going to work. So the wife said, mwah, mwah, see you in the evening. He told the watchman, go and buy milk. He bought milk, and I'm sure as I give this story, you already know who I'm talking about. And they had tea with the watchman. And he says to the watchman, I don't want any visitors today. He went to the bedroom, wrote a letter, put on a suit, put on the jiko covered himself. The wife came back home in the evening. The man was dead. Famous man. The kind of man every young man wanted to be like. And when you opened the suicide note, he says, I'm married, to a, I'm married to a rich family, but I'm a broke man. I can't keep up. And he says, I'm sorry. I was in debt of four million shillings. The wife said, I wish he talked to me because in my chama, I qualify for this kind of money. And a, cl a, a client that owed him money, this is crazy, because he was a businessman. A client that owed him money within 24 hours of his death was paid 7 million. Men are dying on the inside. This man looking very good, smelling good, are one abuse away from depression. One abuse away from you people. Where was he? Kamili. Of course, I'm not complete. You have my rib. <laughs> One insult away from committing suicide. It is hard being a man, but it is a privilege to be a man. Everybody's asking today, where are the men? Where are the men? Church ladies, the most famous statement: there are no men to marry. I want to tell you where we are so that you position yourself. And the lady say, amen. You see, the way you're not saying amen, next year you'll still be the same. Can the lady say amen? <laughs> I've heard some men saying amen. This was not for you, but it's fine. So I want to tell you where we are. Because we have been searching to fill the emptiness, now the tank is saying empty. The amber light has gone on and is saying empty. We still have another 500 kilometers to go. We are not seeing shell total ahead. So we need to park by the roadside. And the men right now are in the cave of Adulam, discouraged, in debt, discontented. We are not appreciated the way we should. We are fighting battles that nobody understands the battles you're fighting for. Nobody is understanding our pain. For you to know a man is in trouble, you do not wait for the tears to roll down his cheeks. We cry loudest in silence. We scream for help in whispers. Now, even in photography, the negative has to be developed in a dark place. I want to take you on a journey. We are at the cave of Adulam. We needed to be hidden for a while because our scars in public are too ugly. So God must deal with our scars in secret. Our tears must dry up because if you come out, you will tell us you are not a true man. It is said when children grow up, they tell their fathers, Dad, thank you for paying school fees. Thank you for buying food. Thank you for paying rent. And they tell their mothers, thank you for loving me. Why? We are objects. We are functionaries. Yet we did it because we love. Go to America today. Now I'm about to step on some toes. The highest number 
of women over the age of 60 are in America. Kenyans. Why? Because their children took them there and left their fathers here reading newspapers in the morning because you are done with your school fees. You paid our rent. You even got us to America. We are done with you. Mom, please come. We will take care of you in America. Men are dying in silence. Men are dying lonely. Have you ever seen a man reading a newspaper with such concentration? When you check, it's for last year. Oh, dad, are you okay? That's once a month. I'm sending you a Mpesa. Oh, so dad is okay. Dad, thank you for paying school fees. Thank you for doing this. But mom, you loved us so much. Who told you? We do not want your words to feel that emptiness. And today, none of you should ask a man to take you for lunch. You better take them for lunch. And if you cannot take a man for lunch, fill him with words of affirmation. We love you. We appreciate you. I know it's been tough, but you know what? We got your back. There is nothing as powerful as a woman or somebody or children saying, we got your back. I was seeing my daughter's WhatsApp status. Hey, she has praised me today. I hope it will be also tomorrow. She did, I think, 10 photos. One, we, I'm advising her. Another one, I was taking her to the shooting range and a father who takes you to the shooting range. But I was waiting for and a father who loves you, but it is when. We take what we can. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, these men have been in the cave of Vajulam and that's why it is preposterous, it's obnoxious, it is super stinking. Kizungu kubwa. For a, a man to gossip another man. There's something Bishop did here, an illustration that went viral all over the world called back to back. You know the things I go through because I'm a man, meaning I also understand what you go through. I should be the last person to hit a fellow man. Now men are the gossips. Wanaume, please, we are soldiers in the battlefield. Be among the 400 in the cave of Adolam because something is cooking there. And these same men, ladies and gentlemen, who went in discouraged and in all those issues are the same man the Bible records were the mighty men of David. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, let me speak to you. We are coming out. We are coming out better fathers. We are coming out better husbands. We are coming out better leaders. We are coming out better men. That we will protect the honor. We will lead our families back to church. But for a time, please don't judge us. Don't say we were absent. We were being dealt with in the cave of Adulam. Why? Of the issues you have been looking for. Every man searches for a meaning. Why? There's something that was removed. If you lose your key, you will go everywhere looking for your key. And sometimes you step on mud. Yes, in our search for meaning, we have stepped in wrong places. In our search for meaning, we have been absentee fathers. In our search for meaning, we have said things we should not have said. But understand, we are looking for something to fill us. And that is why I talk to you about gossip. There are people who want to gossip you when you fall. But do you have men who can circle you and say we'll cover your nakedness as you're being sorted men to men pray for each other it is hard being a man but it is a privilege to be a man that man collapsed on the 42nd minute almost half time on a 90 minute game yes we are collapsing before our time on earth is over but with your quick action for a fellow man that man as this guy came back to finish the rest of his career. We cannot allow men to die while we can do something about it. Today, men, I charge you, leave no man behind. Stand with one another. Because when a man says, Nyumbani akukaliki, he does not need to give me the details. I know already what he's saying. If a man, you say hello to a man, he says, hey, a woman will say, huh? hey, na manisha nini? And then you talk and talk. When a man says, hey, says it is well. It is well. Sometimes just see my scar and say it's okay. 
I will cover you. One of the reasons I love my bishop, I have never met a man who has fought for me like Bishop David Morel. And some things he will never tell me. I was even told one time he defended me at Tamarind Tree. He doesn't know. Do you have men who can do that? None of us is perfect. Don't laugh at my wound because it's here. Divorce. You, you are struggling with pornography. That we cannot see. But it's because you are searching for meaning. I pray for every man, including myself, that this will be our comeback. That this will be the day that will say, you know what, it was tough, but it was worth it. That the Lord held us close and we have come back for the second half of our life and we will give it one big valiant effort. And to the ladies, all we ask you to do is hold us in prayer. To our children, once in a while, tell us we love you. That's it. It is not hard to please a man, by the way. For a woman, it is hard. You bring the most expensive synthetic weave. She says, no, I want a Brazilian. A man, I honor you. A man, I appreciate you. A man just wants to hear. I know it's tough, but I got you. I know it's tough. I know you're looking for a job, but I know you're trying. Ladies, do you promise to pray for men today? No, no, do you promise to pray for men today? Do you promise to pray for men today? To the men, we are coming out of the cave of Adullam. We went in discouraged. We are coming out mighty. God bless you.